Hey, I'm Noah, creator of Blackthorn Prod, and in today's Unity tutorial we will have a close look at animation transitions using Unity's animator window and a bit of C Sharp. So what are animation transitions? Well, the easiest way to explain this is with an example. Here the character is standing idle, and by pressing the arrow keys, he'll transition from his idle animation to a run animation. If I hit space, he'll now jump. So there was a transition between his run state and jump states. With that said, let me show you how to do this. So I have this simple cartoon character with three animations shown previously, idle, run and jump. But when hitting play you'll notice that even though I'm hitting the arrow keys and spacebar, the character is remaining in his idle pose. Let's head over to the animator window and figure out why. You can access this window right here. So you'll notice that my animations are represented with these boxes. One of these boxes, the one entitled Idle, is highlighted in orange and has a connection with this green entry box. Basically, this means that this is the default animation the character will play when the game starts. You can change which animation in your animator is the default state by left-clicking on it and choosing Set as Default State. For example, let me do so with the run animation and you'll see that when I hit play, my character will, by default, run. I'll undo that though with Control z What I really want is my character going from idle to run when I hit an arrow key, and from run to idle when I've stopped holding down the arrow keys. So I need to make a connection between idle and run. I'll right click on the idle animation box and choose make transition. You'll notice a white arrow appears. I'll now click on the run animation and now the arrow will links the two states. If I now click on this arrow, you'll notice this condition menu. For now it's empty, so let's make a new condition. We can create one under parameters and hitting the little plus sign. We'll have to choose between these four condition types. In this case, the bool condition is the best. I'll call the condition is running and then select my transition arrow and hit the plus sign in the conditions menu. So now when is running is equal to true, my character will stop playing his idle animation and begin running. Of course, I'll make a transition going from run to idle now, and for condition, I'll choose is running once again, except this time I only want my character stopping his run animation to play his idle one if is running is equal to false. And the way we set whether or not is running is equal to true or false is via code. So I'll make a new C -sharp script called character anim and open it up. First things first, I need to grab a reference to my animator component attached to my character. So I'll make a private variable of type animator called anim and set that equal inside of my start function to the animator component attached to my character. In my update function, I'll now check whether the player is hitting the left or right arrow key and if he is, I want the character to run. In other words, I want my is running bool condition to be set to true. So I'll type anim.setbool and inside the parentheses, I must type between quotation marks the name of the condition, so is running, and then I must state true or false. And as I said a few seconds ago, we want is running to be equal to true, so our character plays the run animation. However, if my player is not holding down those arrow keys, that means the character is supposed to be idle. And I'll copy this line of code, paste it in here and change true to false. Heading back into Unity, I'll drag and drop this script onto my character and test this out. And indeed, the character will transition from idle to run and back. However, things in my case don't feel very responsive. The character transitions from idle to run rather slowly, which doesn't feel great. And that's when these settings come into play. I'll disable has exit time, which we don't currently need but we'll come back to later in the video. The only really important setting here, other than has exit time and the actual exit time, which we will take a look at in just a moment, is the transition duration value. It's basically how many milliseconds or seconds will it take for your character to go from one animation state to another. The higher this value, the more slow the transition, and the lower the value, the faster. 
In other words, a value of zero will see your character immediately snap from idle to run. I'll go for a 0.1 just to make things look a little smoother. I'll now do the same for run to idle, disabling has exit time and giving my transition duration a value of 0.1. And now things feel a lot more responsive and intuitive. Okay, let's now get our character jumping. To do so, we will use a different type of condition. So I'll click the little plus sign up here and choose this this time trigger, calling it jump. I want my player being able to jump at any given moment, so whether he is standing idle or running, he can jump. As a result, we can use this blue box named any state and make a transition between it and the jump animation. So no matter what animation the character is playing, he will be able to transition to this jump animation when the jump condition is triggered. Once he's played that animation, however, we want to transition to the idle or run state. So I'll make an arrow linking those two and leave the conditions menu empty. Again, to trigger our jump animation, we must do some simple programming. So when I hit the space key, I'll get my character leaping in the air by typing anim dot, and instead of using set bool, I'll use set trigger. Because remember, we are using a trigger parameter to get our character transitioning from any state to his jump state. And now inside the parentheses, all I need to do is type the exact name of the trigger parameter between quotation marks. So jump. Before hitting play however, I'll make sure to uncheck has exit time for this transition here. And to make things feel really responsive and intuitive, I'll zero out transition duration so my character hops in the air immediately. Now let's take a look at these transitions. As usual, I'll set up my is running condition, getting my character to play the run animation if is running is equal to true, and if not, get him to play his idle animation. I'll also tweak transition duration. And this is when has exit time comes into play. Take a look at what happens if we uncheck has exit time. When we hit play and try and jump, the character will start playing his jump animation, but very quickly resume his idle or run animation. This is definitely not what we want. We want our character playing his whole jump animation, and only then go back to running and jumping. So let me check has exit time and take a close look at this exit time value. A value of one here will get our character playing 100% of his jump animation before transitioning to, in this case, the run animation, which is exactly what we want. You can of course set it to, for example, 0.5 and only play 50% of the animation, but that is really what we want. So in most cases, leave this at one. I'll make sure to do the same for the transition between jump and idle. And now I can press play and get my character leaping in the air. Awesome. If you're getting some strange behaviors, though normally you shouldn't, try disabling the loop box of your jump animation. Since unlike run and idle, we don't want our character endlessly jumping unless we actually press space. Note that there are two other condition types you can use, float and int but I've never used both. They basically let you play a certain animation when a float or int value is smaller or greater than x amount. So maybe have a play around with these, though again, you really don't need them, especially when starting out. And that will mark the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did and want to be absolutely awesome, you can support me with a monthly donation via Patreon like these awesome supporters and help me continue making regular game dev content. With that said, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. That too is so appreciated. All right, stay tuned. Cheers.